good evening, everybody. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. It is our privilege to get to meet together again tonight on this midweek service and dive into the Word of God. Amen? And it don't matter what page we turn to, it's all good in the Scriptures, and we all can be helped, and it's all for our good. It's important to be reminded of that today, but uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm thankful you're here. It's always a privilege to worship the Lord together with y'all, and uh, looking forward to seeing what God has for us tonight in our service. Got some really exciting things coming up at our church, and I just am so overwhelmed this week. I uh, just sat in my office yesterday and kind of recollecting on what has transpired, transpired over the last six months to a year here, thinking about all of our young children that uh, we have invested in. And guys, I really believe this. I believe that the public school system is absolutely decayed, and uh, it is leading our children and literally, as Dustin and I say, has turned the schools has turned into indoctrination camps, um, and it has been a privilege to watch God open doors for the people here at our church, the young people. And uh, right now, we have nine children uh, going out of public school, going into Bailey's Grove, and uh, we're we're going to start we're going to start as a church. The Lord's laid this on my heart and talked to a few people about it, and uh, we're going to start. Just like we support a missionary, we want to take a child and support them to go to school. Um, and it's going to be a sacrifice for our church, but I think it's going to be willing. And I think it's going to be worth it. Amen? And um, just, I'm talking to, I, oh, also, if you have children going to Bailey's Grove next year, bear with me. I have a meeting with, past, with Principal Cook. Okay, the pastor's name is Pastor Shook, and the principal's name is uh, Cook. Right, so uh, sometimes I get a little bit confused uh, on the names there, but if you do have children uh, going over there, I'll have some more information for you uh, this coming Sunday, uh, maybe even earlier than that, uh, concerning, uh, you know, you might need to go out to the school, go ahead and grab an application. If you've already received your application, uh, Heather and Dustin's already received theirs, I do believe, um, their application, right? Yes, yes, and what I told um, the principal is, Mr. Cook, that I would turn all of our references in together. That way I wouldn't have to go see him, you know, nine different times. So um, as, as soon as everybody gets their applications, which you will go to Bailey's Grove Baptist School, get your applications, then turn your pastor reference into me, I'll then write it out and give it to uh, Principal Cook. So uh, that's kind of how that works works out. I'll have a little more information for you and how the process of that's going to work. And uh, there's the world travelers. But uh, good to see Craig and Sandra with us. Glad they made it back from Mexico safely. And uh, amen there. But uh, yeah, I'll have a little more information uh, about schooling for y'all here pretty soon. Uh, just kind of give you up to date what's going on in our church. A couple announcements. Um, choir practice dates. Um, we were going to have a Saturday choir practice on the 26th. And uh, Miss Lori and my daughters, and mostly Miss Lori, has been over here working for the last two days. We're complete, completely redoing our choir books. So we're, we got them all organized and detailed. And we got about how many songs? We've got about 15 songs. Uh, most of them are new songs that we've not learned yet. Uh, so we're really excited. Miss Laura is learning them. Uh, I know most of them, Miss Laura knows most of them due to east side and growing up there, so we're already ahead of the game. Really want to focus on that, so I'm going to ask you if you're a part of our choir, um, please be attentive and uh, come out to our choir practice Saturday the 26th, and we'll have one Sunday the 27th. We will not have choir practice this Sunday or Sunday night service due to Father's Day, so please keep that in mind. July 11th through the 14th, Brother Jamie Smithy. Jamie Smithy, I did talk to him yesterday, and it's not Smitty, it's Smithy, so uh, I'm safe as saying his last name. Uh, he's going to be coming in preaching revival for us, and uh, looking forward to that. July 3rd is going to be a cookout uh, and ice cream, so uh, you come out and be a part of that. Uh, new singing schedules in the office, uh, leadership meeting. If you are in any form of leadership, if you are a teacher, Sunday school teacher, nursery worker, I would like for you to come to this. It's June the 22nd, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So that is all the announcements that I have for you today. And back to what I was talking about real quick on supporting one child 
to go to Christian school. Um, we, this is going to be individuals that says, just like we do faith promise mission giving, say, look, if we can get 10 families to give $30 a month, then we'll have a tuition covered for a year. 10 families, $30 a month. That's a tuition for a year um, as far as monthly. So uh, just keep that in mind, and uh, we're going to be starting that. And if you are w interested in giving to that, then please let us know. I think if we can all come together and help one another, we can make a difference. Amen. And a lot of hands make light work, and I know people are struggling, and I know people are, um, you know, trying to support their own family. And Lord knows that it takes everything a man can make to support a family nowadays. But I think the Lord honors for this. Amen. And uh, standing behind our young people, trying to get them a Christian education. So um, praise the Lord for that. And I've got a card. Miss Ann gives here, and uh, we're going to read this to the church. Embrace a heart of gratitude for one grateful thought whispered to God is the perfect prayer. Dear Calvary Baptist Church family, thank you for the best graduation party I could have asked for. My family and I appreciated all of those who helped directly uh, or decorate and organize and prepare the food and took the time out to celebrate with my family and I. A special thanks to Calvary Baptist Church for the beautiful Bible and prayer journal as well as for providing the cake and the scrumptious fried chicken, part of the decorations and the fellowship hall. Thank you all for making my graduation party a memorable one, Miss Amanda and Fetchner family. So praise the Lord for that. It was our privilege to stand behind her there. But uh, let's go ahead and enter into a time of worship. We'll go into a time of prayer after we sing a song together. So let's, let's pray together. Uh, today father we love you i thank you for this time and privilege that we have to come to this place that you have sanctified and separated for your purposes i pray that tonight lord the saints would be encouraged your name would be honored and glorified through the preaching of your word through the singing of the saints and i pray that uh, lord that our singing and our worship would be a sweet smelling savor in the ears of of God tonight and I pray Lord that it would reach heaven and that you would touch our hearts Father and stir us Lord in a, in a special way and Lord God I pray that you'd just be with us tonight as we open up the word of God and I pray that you'd encourage us and, and help us uh, go the right way in this church I thank you for all the young people represented the willing servants that are here Father the ones that give so much I just thank you for them uh, Lord and what you're doing in the lives of the hearts of your people here thank you for saving I thank you for sanctifying. Lord, there's been many been baptized in the last month, and Father, people have been saved, and lives have been encouraged and changed and lifted up and strengthened, Father, and influenced by your word. And Lord, we're just so grateful to see your work happen here. And Lord, I just pray that you continue to work and don't give up on us. I thank you for the art trip that we got to go on, and Lord, the faith that had been encouraged through that trip. And thank you for letting us invest in our young people and invest in our families here. Thank you for the freedom that we have to do that, the liberty that we have in our Christ Jesus. And Lord, for the ones that could not be here tonight that are home sick and afflicted, I pray, Lord, for your blessings upon them. Uh, Lord, for the ones that are here, again, I pray that you'd bless them. And Father, we know that all blessing comes from you. And every good gift that we get to experience in this life, um, uh, the, the family members that we have, Lord, the good friends we have, they're all a gift from you. And uh, Lord, help us not take it for granted. Lord, help us not to be phone grumbling and complaining today, but Lord, help us to be thankful uh, in the midst of all the situations going around us. And Lord, when I think of how good you've been to me and how undeserving I am, I, my heart overwhelms with gratitude. And I thank you, Lord, for loving me. And our eyes look towards you tonight, again, from whence cometh our help. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. If you will, please, are you glad to be saved tonight? Praise the Lord. Glad to be in church? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and take your white hymn books and uh, turn to page 391. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. 391, your white hymn books. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse. First, second, and fourth verse. <laughs>
prayer to bless tonight. And uh, I'm thankful that we have a future that will be spent with our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Listen, this earth is just our, we're just passing through. There's coming a day, the Bible says, when the eastern clouds will part. And the Lord will call his bride up to heaven to reign in eternity with him. You know, the Bible says that we're going to come back with Christ to rule and to reign. We're going to come back. He's going to remake the earth. And we're going to come back to rule and reign with him forever and ever. Pastor, I believe it was Paul who said, even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. If that's your heart, say amen. 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 I just assume Lord come back right now. Amen. But we've got work to do, so he had not come back yet. So praise the Lord for that. As we open up in a word of prayer tonight, uh, if you got your prayer sheet, I know many times we good Baptists always leave our prayer sheet at home on Wednesday night. Uh, is there any more in the back? Anybody need one? Okay. I've got... Uh, I'll have some new ones coming out in July. I'm trying to make these last for two months. If we need to do it every month, that's okay too. But uh, if you need one, if you'd like one, Brother Phillips got some or Josh, if you'd like to have one, uh, to write down these notes and keep up with the prayer requests for uh, with inside the church and those special requests that we all have. So many times we raise our hands on Wednesday night and ask you for, to pray for certain things. But uh, just be mindful of that as we go through our week and not just be on a you know, Wednesday night or Sunday morning when we pray for each other and pray for the needs uh, that we have as a church and as individuals. But uh, for our list, we always start with our church needs. And I would especially want you to pray for Pastor Grayson, um, uh, preaching the Word of God like any pastor would do and like our pastor does, uh, reaps the wrath of Satan, reaps the wrath of evil, whether... Satan uses outside forces, uses forces, people sometimes with inside the walls of the church. May that never be here at this church. God, I pray that you pay, pray for your pastor, pray for the needs that he has, and the, his, his spiritual strength, the Holy Spirit would fill him and use him in a great and mighty way for this church. And pray for all our teachers, uh, those that are teaching now, Miss Mary, teaching our young kids uh, for adult classes and things that we do around here on Sunday mornings. Pray for those, the teachers, that are our music director, we would like for you to pray for one to relieve some of that uh, work that the pastor has to do. That's not necessarily his calling to lead in music, but God's using him in that area, and he's doing a very good job. Uh, pray for our church. Pray for our individuals inside the churches and the needs there. Uh, pray for numeri numerical growth within. We'd like to see these pews filled, but that's God's will, and as we do the work of the ministry, God will work in that as our pastor preaches and as we invite as we spread the gospel, as we are commanded to do. It's not just the preacher's job, it's all of our jobs. We're a body of believers here at this church. We pray for our growth numerically, pray for our growth spiritually, for those that are new babes in Christ, those that are older in Christ. We all have room, we all have need for growth. So pray for that uh, for uh, our church. Uh, pray for those that are lost. And if I had a, uh, just a raise of hand, I would say that probably everybody in here has somebody they know that are lost and on the way to a, a devil's hell. Uh, that's the ministry of the church, is to get the gospel out to all these people that we know. I know it's difficult in our day. It's always been difficult, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Our job is to do, do the work, is to present the gospel and to ask, invite. If that's the least we can do, is just ask somebody to come to church, and that's good, and then the pastor can give us the message and the word of God. So pray for those that are lost. I pray for the health needs. Uh, I've got Richard Woodell. I'd seen him. He seems to be fine. I've uh, seen him a couple days ago. So if he's, if you've got him on your list, I would say you can go ahead and, and, and scratch him out on that. But continue to pray for Mildred and uh, Miss Brother Terry uh, for the needs there. Any, I think they were fine. They were here Sunday. So anything new on that, Roby? Seems to be doing pretty good. Seems to be doing pretty good. Continue to pray for Miss Mildred and Terry for the health needs. Uh, Melissa's family. Uh, I don't see them in here right now. So, but anyway, and Dennis Hogan for his health. Uh, he's having a, been a lot of chest problems, and it's still his sinus condition and his health there. For Tammy how, Miller. How is Dennis? Have you talked to him? Thank you for investing in your brother. Thank you for yeah. taking time and really spending with him. Appreciate 
been, been a big help to them. Uh, she's continuing to Dennis Hogan. Also, Tammy Miller for her health. Uh, and then they're not here tonight. I believe they had a funeral today for um, uh, Donnie's aunt, uh, the Edwards family. Uh, so just pray for that family as they uh, mourn the passing. Uh, Donnie was real upbeat because of her life, because she was a child of God. She lived the life that uh, she claimed to believe. So thank the Lord for that. Uh, continue to pray for Camden, uh, for his health needs and uh, some of the things that he may need to do in his life and lifestyle to help these headaches uh, to go away. So continue to pray for him and pray for my brother Keith. Uh, he's supposed to go Monday for a consultation on surgery or whether they could do surgery, whatever they may do for his next situation and the issue there. So pray for him uh, in that area. I've got a carrying glass. I don't really know what that's about. It says health. Angela's mama. Okay, yeah. I think Commander just lost it there, though. Uh, can pray for, let's see, who else we got? Carol Crawford. Of course, continue to pray for her and her health. Uh, anything else that you would like to mention uh, this evening that you would like us to pray as a church about? Any special needs? Roby? For, for Leon, Leon and Monty. Yeah, Leon come up the day we was going to uh, the ark. He, he drove in and he knew we were going, so he just come wish wish us a good trip. And he was on his way to the doctor then for something. It may not have been for his heart at that time, but continue to pray for them. Uh, and again, I like to just mention for uh, tonight and for uh, the series that the pastor started on the counterculture. Uh, pray for that series. It's very difficult. I know. To preach that, he's preaching the truth. It's very difficult sometimes for us to hear. And as we talk about our children and all those nine different children, praise the Lord for that, that are going to Christian school. Uh, I, I grew up in a city school. I grew up in a public school. Nothing like it is today, of course. Uh, when we carried, we carried knives and carried guns in a car and all those things that, Lord, they would have a heart attack if you did that today. But uh, they are trying to indoctrinate our children. Uh, this critical race theory they're pushing, and, and thank the Lord I see parents in some cities and some states and some towns bucking against this, and they should. They need to keep that stuff out of our schools. It is nonsense at best. It is a work of Satan. But this series on the counterculture, uh, the culture is trying to counter us, guys. They're trying to destroy anything that's right, anything that's godly, or anything that's true. As we know, the, the Bible tells us that it will come a day when men say he is evil, good, and good is evil, and guys were there. So pray for our young people. They, they need our prayers. And thank the Lord we have uh, at least nine and, and hopefully maybe some others over a period of time. And I think it's good for a church to support that, whether it's through funds or just encouraging or both. So pray for that. Uh, pray for the series. Pray for our pastor as he, he gives us this series and all the different things that will go along with that. Be attentive. Don't just be, let's just don't be doers. I mean, don't be hearers of the word, but what does the scripture say? Be doers of the word. Don't be hearers only. And guys, then we'll see the numbers grow in this church, and then we'll see Christians uh, spiritually growing and developing and maturing within the faith. And that's what we're here. This is what the church has provided for us. This is why God provided the church for us, is to be strengthen and to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and not just for here but it's to take it outside those doors and present it to the people bring them in and have them be nourished and discipled and grown and this is one thing I like about this church it's a discipling church it helps other people new Christians and even older Christians to grow in their faith so if not anything else uh, this evening we'll go ahead and open up in a word of prayer yes Mr. Pray for Susan with, you said a double ear infection? Wow. Ear infection and also on top of being pregnant. So that's migraines. Is that because of ear infections or hormones? Yeah, pray for health need there, the ear problems and headaches and all that to go along with it. Yeah. 
Canis is homesick. Uh, uh, Jackson seems to be better, so can you pray for him? But pray for Candace. Uh, seems like uh, Candace has probably had what Jackson had. I don't, I don't know, but uh, she's just not feeling real nice. So pray for her. Yes, Miss Ann. Just not healing up. Okay, pray for Miss Ann for the wound there on her finger uh, as she fell in Seattle. So just pray for her there. All right, anything else? All right, well, let's open up in a, in a word of prayer this evening. It's good to have Craig and Sandra back the, this evening with us. How was your trip? Entertaining. <laughs> I've seen some of the videos with the, the dogs and the taxis, and I didn't see many of them, but I know there were some on there. But it looks like y'all had an interesting time. It's good to have y'all back. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this evening, we thank you, Lord, that we can come before a holy, righteous God and make our requests known. And Lord, Scripture says that we can come boldly, Lord, well, not arrogantly, arrogantly, Lord, but boldly, to make our requests known. And understanding, Lord, that you uh, have or care for our, our feelings and our infirmities and all the needs, Lord, that we will bring before you. Lord, I ask that you would just bless this church. I pray your hand will be upon this church. I ask that you would guide us and direct us as we go forward as individuals here in this church and as a, as a pastor and, and the deacons and the trustees and the members, the whole body, Lord, you would strengthen and encourage. I pray for our pastor tonight. I pray that you'd fill him with your spirit, Lord, given the peace of God that passes all understanding, Lord, through the process of teaching and leading and shepherding, shepherding of people, Lord. I ask that you would just give him wisdom, especially in this a series, Lord, and not just especially that, Lord, but in this series on the culture, and Lord, how it's affecting individuals, how it's affecting churches, how it's affecting lives and families, Lord, I pray that you give him strength, and I pray that you build a hedge around him, protect him from the forces from the outside, and Lord, even from the inside that would discourage and, and um, do whatever it takes to stop these things, Lord, I ask that you would give him strength for our church and all the teachers, all those that are working within the walls of this church to help our young people grow and develop and to uh, strengthen through the word of God our people. I ask that you just give us strength in numbers. Lord, I pray that you give us strength in our spiritual lives. Grow us. Lord, convict us where conviction is needed. Lord, we're not scared of conviction. Lord, sometimes we're scared of taking that conviction and, and uh, working it out in our lives. Lord, I ask that you would just help for those in our own hearts, Lord, and I pray uh, we have a people sitting out here in our pews that have somebody in our minds, Lord, that are lost and we and they know it. And, Lord, that they're praying for that specific name. And probably there will be many names that will be lifted up to you, Lord. I ask that you would just uh, convict those names, Lord. I pray that you convict, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the work of God in those lives. Because that's what's going to save is the work of God. But I ask that you would just meet with us, Lord, as individuals and as a church tonight for those that are in need, Lord, this evening, in our physical and a, maybe in a mental, emotional, Lord, a financial financial needs within our midst today. I pray that you would just supply those needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, we ask for the uh, Mildred and, and Brother Terry, Lord, and their health needs, and thank you for who they are, and thank you for the ministry here in this church. And I ask that you would just be with Tammy Miller and, and Donnie, Lord, and for Tammy's health and, and, and Donnie's um, all the things that Donnie has on him and the passing of a, an aunt, Lord, but we thank you, Lord, we understand that this aunt was a child of God and she knew you, Lord, so it's a blessing. Lord, we understand the loss, Lord, we understand, Lord, that uh, they're not lost. We know where they are. They're in heaven. With their, they're with their God and with their Savior. Lord, we continue to pray for Camden for his help through these migraines and the things that, Lord, he'll need to do to help maybe alleviate these headaches for the near future, and I pray that you just strengthen him in the family for, for Katie and Josh and, 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 and Grayson and, and the family there for the needs. I ask that you would be with my brother Keith as he goes Monday for a consultation on his neck and the surgery that may be pending and they may be able to do shots. We don't know what's going to happen, Lord, but you do. I ask that you would just strengthen the Lord and use him 
in a great and mighty way in his own personal life and here within inside the walls of this church. And but we think of Dennis Hogan and the, the health needs he's been going through and uh, the passing of an uncle, Lord, a few weeks ago. And Lord, for his, his chest pains and his nasal and his sinuses and the areas, Lord, that he's been dealing with. And maybe even in his spiritual needs, Lord, I pray that you just grant uh, the request, Lord, of your people, Lord, as he seeks you and, and, and searches for direction in his life, Lord, help him and guide him in each of these situations. Lord, there's many other needs tonight for Miss Ann, for her finger. Uh, for Brother Monty, Lord, his health issues there. I pray that you just come alongside and help him. Lord, we just want to pray for our country tonight. Lord, we want to pray for our president, pray for our vice president. Lord, we are in, in, in great need for a move of God in our country, for a move of the Holy Spirit in the lives of people, and especially, Lord, no, no, not necessarily especially, but it would, especially within our government, Lord, and those that are in authority over us. And you're, we're commanded by your word to pray for those in authority over us. I ask that you would just give direction. I, Lord, most of all, I pray that you save those souls. Lord, they are lost, uh, just like the drunk on the street are lost on the way to a devil's hell. And Lord, I pray that you'd save them, help them, and direct them, Lord. They are puppets, Lord, in your hands, and I pray that you'd use them according to your will. And help us to see that and understand that. Help our local government, Lord, our, our law enforcement, our firefighters, our military, all those, Lord, are in service of others. And I ask that you would just give them peace, strength, and health. And Lord, I ask that you would just give guidance and direction uh, for our country and for our leaders, all the aspects of it. And Lord, tonight, I ask that you just help us as we open our hearts to what the Holy Spirit would have for us. And I pray that you give guidance and directions as we go out these doors, Lord, that we take what we learn and understand how the culture, Lord, is fighting against us and how to combat that. But we understand that, that the com combats that we uh, are involved in uh, all circle and all are strengthened by the Word of God. But we can have philosophies, we can have reasoning, we can have all of those things, Lord, but it's going to take the Word of God and the Spirit of God's work in people's life to change hearts. Help us, Lord. Help this pastor. Help this church. And I pray for guidance and direction for us. And we love you and thank you for all that you'll do. And help us to be careful to honor you, Lord, and to praise you for your grace and your mercies upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you will, go ahead and take your Bibles tonight, and we're going to continue in this introduction to counterculture. I did not finish Sunday night, and we won't have service this coming Sunday. And I kind of want to get this... Um, covered uh, before we proceed any further so tonight I want to finish up what we were talking about Sunday night and again what we're talking about through this series is is living in a day and hour living in a culture that is contrary to what we find in the scriptures and how that would influence us and the last thing that I would want us to do is come away um, with no conviction for the loss I, I hope this breeds um, a passion and a compassion for others as we consider their condition uh, and the culture that we live in that they have been blinded and that they have been deceived and they, they are lost and they are free from righteousness and they definitely need a Savior just as I needed a Savior. Amen? Just as I do need a Savior, uh, they're in no different boat than we are other than they're lost and they're blind to the fact. And hopefully this will flame and fuel the church to... Um, be more involved and engaged in the culture. We are supposed to counter the culture, but at the same time, we engage in the culture, not participating in the same acts and deeds, but uh, uh, engage in the gospel with, this, with these people. So, again, turning your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 5, we'll begin reading there. We'll start reading Isaiah 5, and go ahead and, uh, as you're turning to Isaiah 5, also find 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and Isaiah chapter 5, and uh, I'm going to have you stand uh, for the reading of God's Word, if you will, as we rehearse Isaiah 5, verses 20 through 24. Isaiah 5, verses 20 through 24, and the, and the Bible can speak uh, for me in this. I'm not speaking for it, amen, it speaks for us. So uh, Isaiah chapter number 5, uh, we'll begin reading in verse number 20. I have been helped greatly already uh, in this study, in this series, in the mindset as I've been reading that book by David Platt and uh, it's really helped me 
uh, to think about. There's other people out there besides us, amen? And uh, there, are a, there is a world outside these walls that, that needs the gospel. And I pray that not just we'll understand what God wants us to do, but we'll be able to engage the culture. and It'll be, make an impact and affect each one of our lives in a way that uh, would bring compassion towards others that we uh, live in around us and our neighbors. Isaiah 5, verse 20. The Bible would read, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle with strong drink which justify the wicked for reward, take away the righteousness from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Let us pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the time you've given us together tonight. And I just pray, Lord, you'd add your blessing upon this. And I ask, Lord, that you'd be with the hearts of these thy people. I pray that this message would be effectual. And, Lord, that we'd come away as lights and uh, we'd be a little more salty this week uh, than we were before this. I pray, Lord, for encouragement, for direction. And I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. I pray that you'd help me uh, preach this message. Cleanse me of sin. I pray that you'd bless my dear wife as she's at home. I pray, Lord, that you'd healer of this little sickness she's got. Thank you for my family. Thank you for loving me, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You may be seated. You can find your place in 2 Corinthians 6. But while I'm saying that, I would like to say this. Uh, anytime that we break open the Word of God, no matter what we read inside the Scriptures, we are, um, if, if we will take what we hear and we will put one foot in front of the other and, and let this be a light into our path and a guide into our life, then uh, we are progressing, amen. As I come up on those pulpit, Miss Laura, I come up steps. And as we look into the law of liberty, we go up and we ascend. And uh, we don't descend. Matter of fact, when we descend is when we uh, start going away from the Word of God and, and living contrary and getting sucked into the vortex of the culture, uh, the flesh, and the devil, and uh, putting us in the wrong direction. But as we look into the perfect law of liberty, and um, continue therein, that's when we ascend, ascend in life. It's when we excel. It's when we go closer to the Lord. And that's where happiness comes from. Say, preacher, I'm a Christian and I want to be happy. Our happiness and our joy is found in serving the Lord. Amen? And if we're going to live away contrary to that, then, then, then we're going to be living contrary to joy in our life. If you want prosperity, and I'm not talking about fi fi uh, financial, but, uh, but spiritual prosperity you want success and you want to be happy say nobody in here tonight come in here and say preacher i don't want to be happy the way to happiness the way to joy is ascending in god's word amen that's going to take you to a joyful life not living under the demise of sin not living in the own understanding but accepting god's way and living in it amen I tell you what, we, we fight and struggle with this but if we'll just let the lord have his way we'll be a whole lot happier We'll be a whole lot joyful. If we'll focus on holiness, we'll be happy. Amen? And God's, God's focused a lot more on our holiness than He is our happiness. But see, the trick is, if we'll be focused on our holiness, that'll make us happy. Amen? So uh, consider this as we go into this mindset of countering the culture. And all, all through this, we'll talk about racism. We'll talk about, um, you know, feminism. Well, tonight we'll be continuing perversion and um, homosexuality, transgender, bestiality, that is a real thing that has taken place and living outside the will of God and fornication. We're talking about perversion. Perversion is simply um, living in a manner that has perverted what God has originally intended. And what God has originally intended, like we said last time, is God's best. It is the designer's best for our life. So consider this as we... Talk about this mindset of perversion. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verse 14, Let the word of God speak louder than I do. 
Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Baal? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Listen to verse seven, uh, chapter 7 verse 1. Having therefore these precious promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and, and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So um, when we started in this series last Sunday night or Sunday night, we talked about what does God want me to do in the culture, and we talked about separation. And the Word of God just spoke volumes to separation. And what you know, Jesus said in John chapter 17, and that inner Trinitarian prayer as God was praying for the ones that would eventually believe and ones that would be part of his flock. He said, I pray for them, not that you would take them out of the world, but you would keep them from evil. And it's not that God's just going to take us out of the world and rapture us up as soon as we get saved. Oh no, God wants to glorify his name through me and you. He's separated the people for himself. And um, he, he said, I don't want you to remove them. I want you to keep them from evil. And uh, he wants us to be separate. What am I to do in a counterculture? Separate to the Lord. What am I to do in, to counter the culture? Is call out sin in the world. Watch this. Uh, today, before I come over here, Candace was sit, laying on the couch, and I was laying on the couch, and uh, I was reading over some, some scripture, and uh, she had just spoke out and said there was a woman on Facebook that had said, I had once said that homosexuality was a sin, but I'm sorry that I ever said that. I'm sorry that I offended someone. Now, our goal was never to offend. And when we talk about a certain topic, um, sometimes we can be prideful and sometimes we can be arrogant. And listen, by the way we respond to the homosexual and to the transgender, we'll express our motive. And if our motive is prideful, why are we trying to pull a moat out of their eye when we got a beam in ours? Amen? And uh, our, our heart should be a heart of compassion. I'm not apologizing for what the scripture says. Amen. And uh, that's not the right thing to do in counterculture. But it, it is to be the voice that they need to hear um, and, and we need to hear. Amen. But uh, so we're supposed to call out sin in, in the culture. And we're supposed to live a life that would give the gospel credibility and offer salvation. So what we have talked about was the wrath revealed towards perversion. And we saw that in the word of God Sunday night. We saw all the different Bible verses that talked about homosexuality, transgender, bestiality, a man dressing like a woman, a woman dressing like a man. And we talked about fornication and how a man, God's design is from one man and one woman to be married together for one lifetime. Amen? In a marriage union and make their vows before the Lord and God consummates that vow. And uh, it's supposed to be a picture of Christ in the church. And uh, again, we're leaving the culture and we're accepting what God's will is and we're living in his way and as we live in his way what are we doing we're ascending we're ascending in the christian life and um, the way of prosperity and happiness is found in them so what we watched is the wrath of god revealed towards perversion in the word of god and uh i want us to give a couple of ex uh, examples in the scriptures and we'll go on to a little bit different aspect in engaging the culture rather than countering it um, in these specific sins so through, throughout examples in the Bible, we see something about the doctrine of retribution. And not only does the Word of God specifically tell us that this specific sin that we're talking about tonight, the, the, the one of perversion and a sexual sense and homosexuality, transgender, bestiality, and um, fornication. Uh, this is a perversion, something contrary to what God has originally designed. See all the verses there? Now watch the couple of examples. The Bible says in Jude 1.7 that even as Sodom and Gomorrah, this is an Old Testament example. And the Bible says these things were written for our examples that we could learn and that we could look back to Sodom and Gomorrah. And why did God destroy 
a specific city because their wickedness was great, because of homosexuality, because of the perversion of what God intended, God truly rained fire and brimstone on a city because of that. Now, I don't get excited about that. That humbles me. That brings me, it should bring us to tears. It should bring a woe to us as our family members and our brothers and, uh, brothers and sisters as far as on a physical standpoint. Our neighbors are caught up in some of these particular sins that we need to engage them. Amen? Not just be a voice, voice against them, but we ought to live a life that would persuade them uh, to, to be a Christian and to love them, be that ambassador of Christ. And Christ was compassionate with sinners and things of that nature. But we do see the doctrine of retribution in the sinners. Uh, I'm sorry, the doctrine of retribution in the Scriptures through examples of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, 2, 2 Thessalonians 1.8 says, In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, from the glory of His power. Genesis 19, 1 through 38 tells the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed a whole city and people because of this perversion. You see, that's not, what the, that's not what the culture is feeding you and I today. But God's word did destroy a whole city because of this. Not only that, he destroyed the world in a flood because of perversion. And um, uh, it's important that we teach our children that. Now, point two, the warning given to perversion. The scripture does call us to warn a perverted culture. But our warning also needs to be conditioned with understanding of our culture's condition. Now church, this is what I want to talk to you and I about today. We can sit up here and we can talk about adultery, we can talk about fornication, we can talk about homosexuality and bestiality, and we can condemn it. But how about being compassionate towards the people that are guilty of these things? How about living in a way that you impact them so much that they would want your Jesus. You know, the, the, per, the world that we live in today, Miss Ann, doesn't need a new definition of Christianity. They need a new demonstration of Christianity. Witness through the church. Amen. Not just a bunch of bigots and not just a bunch of uh, homophobes, they call us, and things of that nature, but people that are actually out there engaged in the culture, winning them, loving them um, in a fashion that would make them desire our Jesus. Amen? Uh, so th this is their condition. Watch this. Now, I don't know my neighbors that well. The people on my street, the, the, the people that I grew up, I, I don't know them like I know Philip. I don't know them like I know my dad. But if they were in a burning building, I would yell and, and tell them to get out. W wouldn't you? You know, if, if uh, the culture that we live in today, if you go around to our regular universities, Craig, here's what they'll say. If, if you ask the people in the universities today, would you save your neighbor or your dog that was drowning? 90% of them says their dog. I mean, that, that's a shame. But here, here's all I'm saying. We ought to be concerned about our culture and not just be sitting back and letting it take place. Um, I, I don't want to be the one whose voice is silent. I don't want to be the one who passes a, a culture that is going to hell in a handbasket and not make an impact and not be a light and not be salt. The church has lost its savor. The, 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 the church has been so cowardly to not tell them the truth. And it's so, been so um, distant that it's not been willing to get its hands dirty. Uh, in aspects of going and loving certain groups and people. So let's understand their condition, the warning given to perversion. Since there's a severe warning, we see through the law and we see through examples. This is a serious thing. So how are we to respond? Some may simply, the, the people that we live in uh, around us, the, the people that's in the sphere of our lives, our culture, some people truly might just not know that what they're doing is wrong because they have been sucked in by the vortex of education, by the vortex of culture, and things of that nature. They're blinded by, the, by, by the, uh, their enemy. I remember uh, Brother Chris Connor come to me one day, and he was talking about a gentleman that he had um, been witnessing to, and 
he was talking about, said, Grayson, I just don't understand why he does not see like I see it. And I said, well, Chris, have you considered that he could be blind? And I wasn't talking about physically blind. He was just blinded spiritually. They don't know no better. They, they are just living according to their nature. And that is what the Bible answer is. Uh, you know, your servants to whom you yield yourselves to obey, and they are servants of sin. And um, uh, consider their condition, church. Some may be simply without knowledge. And I hope our neighbors are not without knowledge. See, being salty is going to the neighbor's door and telling them about the gospel. And it, it's not disgaging. It's not, it's, it, it's not silencing ourselves that's going to impact them. But it is going out and reaching them. Some may simply be without knowledge. Some may be looking for answers. There are people that's living in a, a, a lifestyle that is perverted from what God intended that's looking for answers. And again, we have the answer. The, the answer is the gospel. The answer to ascending is found in the word of God. Their blessedness is not going to be found in freedom to do whatever they want to do. But their happiness and joy will be found bound in the law of God. Bound in God's way. And uh, we ought to be compassionate about that. You know, talking to different people, they're, they're, not everybody grew up like I did. Okay? Not, ever, not everybody grew up in the area that we grew up in. Some people grew up in Colorado. Some people grew up with people that, that mom and dad were lost. Some people grew up, they were just horrible situations and things that happened to them was just unexplainable and unimaginable that shaped them into who they are today and we need to be understanding as we look at people that way do we not uh, I think it's still in 2nd Corinthians I was reading today that Paul talked about the believer not seeing people according to the flesh anymore but we look at people and see their need we wouldn't we wouldn't never want to look at anyone that does anything in a negative sense and aspects of um, you know without compassion and without um, seeing, the, seeing their need. Um, if we have that heart, that's not the heart of the Lord. I remember when Jesus uh, rode up to this city, and I think it was James and John asked the Lord if, he could rain, if they could rain fire and brimstone on the, on the city, and, and Jesus looked at them and said, Wow, you know not what manner of spirit's in you. You know, you might be evil as they are. Um, just, but we ought to have a heart of compassion and love towards people that are living in perversion. And our culture is living in perversion. I'm not condoning it. I'm challenging it. Amen? At the same time, being compassionate to the people that are involved in it. Because what is our great commission? It is the gospel. It is to love. And uh, we'll see that in just a second. Most all the people that are living in this way, consider this, they've been indoctrinated. They have been sucked into the vortex of the culture. They are living in unbelief, and they're deceived by the enemy. They are controlled by their own nature. They're sinners. Deception is what the enemy wants. And this is what he has come on the scene for. Is deception. Since the Bible is true, people, are living in per, per, people that are living in perversion, what I'm doing, I'm explaining their condition. The, it, since the Bible is true, they are dead in sin. They are free from the righteousness of Jesus Christ meaning they're a slave to sin. They're without an advocate for their sin. They're going to stand before God on their own and give an account for their unrighteousness. And I'm explaining the condition of the ones living in perversion. They're waiting on God's wrath. They're separated from God, doomed to pay the penalty of their unrighteousness, hopelessly lost, blind by the enemy and without hope. But here's what should bring us to compassion. Not only the, all them facts, but they are real people. They have real feelings that really need a Savior. People go to bed depressed at night. They, they go to bed heavy. Suicide is one, number the, one of the number one things that uh, young people are killing themselves for today, or um, doing today. Suicide's up a lot. But they're real people. Some of our, even our family members, our loved ones, our neighbors. Uh, one night I was driving home road, Craig, from, uh, I think we were in Lexington. And what I'm talking about is being compassionate to our neighbors. 
and seeing people's condition. But I got a phone call on the way home, and I was about to turn on Mountain Shepherd Road, and it was Richard O'Neill, and that was Jason Robbins. And Jason said, Grayson, somebody's trying to break in Emma O'Neill's house, and she's there by herself. Emma is, I don't know, 13, 14 year old. She's 16 now, but she was scared to death. She's by, by herself. She's my neighbor. And Jason called me because he knew I lived right near her. So I flew in the driveway and uh, got my gack, amen. And uh, when I got to her house, Katie, there was a guy standing in a black hoodie with a hoodie pulled over his head looking in the door of the house. Me and Emma, was, Emma Grace was with me. And I slung open the side door and I grabbed my gun. I didn't point it at him or nothing. But I yelled at him. I said, hey, man, what do you think you're doing? And uh, he never looked at me. So I screamed out again. I said, hey, man, what do you think you're doing? Why? Because I was concerned about my neighbor. Because I was concerned about a little girl in the house that could be in harm's way. And turns out the guy that was trying to break in already left. It was the other neighbor. And I was thinking to myself, dude, why would you wear a black hoodie with it over your head at the nature of my phone call here? You about got shot, Jack. <laughs> but what I'm saying is I had enough compassion to stop by Emma's house to see if she was okay. Why would I not have enough compassion to stop up my other neighbor's house knowing they're living in perversion? Say, so, hey man, can I tell you about Jesus? Hey man, can I show you where true joy comes from? Would you come to church with us so we can love on you and tell you about the Lord? You know, maybe, maybe you see his grass pretty high. You go mow it for him. But, you know, maybe he sees you just joyful when things are going on in your life. Maybe you want to write him a card. And say, hey, man, I've just been thinking about you, been praying for you. Know that uh, you know, whoever God put in the sphere of your life, people are lost without the Lord. Amen? And we're not only to counter the culture, but we're to engage it. And we're salt and light. And if we lost our Savior, we're therefore good for nothing. Uh, turn to, um, all right, watch this. This is the warning. And we'll turn to, go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. As we're continuing through this, uh, first, first Corinthians thirteen. But uh, this is the warning. Listen to the scriptures. First Corinthians six nine. Don't turn there. Again, we're talking about our neighbors. We're talking about engaging them. We're talking about considering their condition of the ones that's living in perversion. Countering the culture is not just living apart from it, but it's engaging it in a loving way as to be honoring to the Lord. But this is the warning to the ones living in perversion. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Look, what it says, it said, Church, do not be deceived. By what? Your own understanding? The education of the day? A democratic liberal party? A liberal professor? Do not be deceived. Could God got any more clear in His revelation to me and you? Don't be deceived. This is their condition. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infinite, nor abusers of themselves with mankind shall inherit the kingdom of God. 2 Corinthians 12, 21. And lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, that I may bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanliness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have commended. Ephesians 5, 5. But what we're doing, we're giving the warning according to the scriptures of the ones living in perversion. For this you know that no whoremonger or unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. The warning is that anyone who commits these sins will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not saying that had committed them in the past. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible then alone says that as such were some of you. You know what that implies? That means when you get saved, penance takes place. That's a fruit of conversion. He that hath this hope in himself purifies himself just as he is pure. As we read in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7 verse 1 that we're pressing on to holiness, that we're uh, looking into the Lord uh, for that. So um, I just wanted to give a warning to, uh, according to the Scriptures, the ones living in perversion in our culture, homosexuality, bestiality, fornication, things of that nature. The warning given to them is a Christian's call. When I see that, what do I do with it? 
well, I'm not living in it, so it don't affect me. So how is it that I, that I use that? We, we put ammo in our magazine to be effective in our life. The Bible says a good soldier don't entangle himself with the affairs of this life, but we are a soldier in the Lord's army. What will he do with this information? This information should call us to watch. Acknowledge their condition. Watch this. Act on their behalf. Brother, uh, Mr. Red, the other day we was coming back from, uh, I was coming back from Huntersville, and Red pulled in front of me right on a, on a call that he had got. And you know what Red was doing? He was acting on their behalf. He was getting paid for the job that he was doing, but a guy had uh, wrecked a, a transfer truck, and it was stuck in a creek, and then the guy had a little machine and also got stuck in a creek. And Red come down there to act on their behalf. And church, it is our, it's our duty as a Christian to act on other people's behalf. See, some people, like my child, and I'm not saying this has anything to do with intellect at all or ignorance or anything of that nature when people are living in this fashion. Spiritual blindness is what it is. It's unrighteousness. It's, it's dealing with a uh, deception of the, of the enemy, things of that nature. But um, in, in, anyways, we need to act on their behalf. And how is it that you are acting on the ones living in perversion? How are you acting on their behalf? I, I can be the voice. I can be the one living a life that makes Christianity desirable. We've got too many prideful people. We've got too many people with their nose up there. Amen? And not enough people acting on others' behalves. Right. Miss Sandra is a, uh, a dialysis nurse. Right, Miss Sandra? A dialysis nurse. And uh, she works a lot. And Craig works her hard. Amen? And uh, so she works a lot. But what she does, she works and labors on someone else's behalf. And we ought to do the same. We ought to be with their best interest in mind. That's loving our neighbors. That's loving our enemies as ourselves. And uh, again, it's not telling them that they're living right, but it is um, living in a way that would help them. It's, accept, it's acknowledging their condition, acting on their behalf, and accepting ridicule, ridicule for their good. It's being willing to be persecuted for them. Even in the New Testament Christians, this is a very extreme example, okay? It, it, a lot of the... Christians in the 1500s, they would not rec recant. Meaning that if the scripture taught it, they would not recant that belief because they would be living for the world rather than God. And they wouldn't cower under that. And here's what would happen. When the people would see the Christian church getting persecuted, you would think that would, it would draw them further away from the church. That's not what happened. Revival breaks out when the church will not lose its conviction and cower under a worldly ideology and a worldly philosophy. That's what brings the power to the church. It's a life living, living by faith, trusting in God's word. So willing to be persecuted for them. Like Stephen said, Father, forgive them for they know what? Do you have that heart tonight? You pray for your loved ones that are lost. I, I, I tell you, this, this part of the sermon, but we can stand here and talk against it, can't we? And we can shout and holler and everything else. But how about what are we going to do to change it? What we, are we going to cause a riot? We ought to. We have revival or riot, right? Spreading the gospel. So accepting ridicule, point number three, and we'll be done. The answer for the problem of perversion. How do we fix it? We are not just called to counter the culture, but engage it as well as else. Well, we have lost our Savior. 1 Corinthians 13. I just want to read this to you and let the Word of God speak louder than I ever can. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tickling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, that means that I know the difference between dispensationalism and covenant theology. And look, I can speak in all kinds of different languages. And I know the Bible. 
But if I show no charity, what does the Bible say? I'm worthless. I'm useless. Really vain. Empty. Being alone. You know, I might know that these things are wrong. And I might, um, you know, we can sit inside the walls of this church and shout and holler. You know, but if I ain't acting in charity, and if I'm not loving and engaging the culture, the Lord might just pat us on the head and say, well, you don't you got a lot to learn, my friend. You know? The Bible says, um, verse 3, Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vanilleth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. Watch this. It rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It beareth all things. It believeth all things. It hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Sacrificial love for a culture that is perverted. I'm not saying we love their deeds, but our commission is to be ambassadors. This is the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciling others to their self. I, I, I not too long ago preached a sermon about what are we doing to bring others to Jesus. And I took it out of the book passage in Luke where they, they dropped the, um, the, the man that was lame um, in front of Jesus through the roof. And they went out of their way and they thought outside the box to get people to Lord Jesus. They sacrificed. They acted on others' behalf to get others to the Lord. And uh, we can counter the culture by being separate from the culture, by calling out the culture's sin, uh, by living a life that is um, credible to the gospel message, and, but also offering salvation and being charitable and loving. Don't forget that part. Uh, hey, guys, I'm glad that God didn't rain wrath on me when I deserved it. I'd been going a long time ago. I'm, I'm glad when I didn't uh, repent one month, two months, three months, four months, God was still on suffering. And I don't think we ought to play with that as a, as a Christian, amen, at all. I'd, I'd encourage anybody to run from it. Uh, but at the same time, God is long suffering. You know what that means? He teaches us to be long suffering. God is forgiving, and He teaches us to be forgiving. And uh, God's um, desire is to save. The woman at the well, he could have rained down on her, couldn't he? Was she living in perversion? She was. What did he do? Go sin no more. He called out her sin. He told her it was wrong. But he said, woman, where are thy accusers? He was the only righteous one there that could have condemned her, sent her away. And he sent her away forgiven. Willing, rather, to forgive and restore and build up and let her ascend her life rather than live in the dominion and the depravity of sin. People think that if I can just live my way, I'll be happy. That's not true. That's the deception of the enemy. If you live God's way, that's the key to success. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit Sunday morning. And the, that word blessed again. And how it's related. Let me give you a few verses and we'll go home. On the answer for the problem of perversion. Um, we read the book of 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, John 13, 14. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Proverbs 10, 12, Hatred stirreth up strife, but watch this, Love covereth sin. And above all things, 1 Peter 4, Fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sin. So we should have a sacrificial love, a satisfying persuasion that people look at the joy of our lives, if we, if we get to work with individuals, if, if we get to live with individuals, if there's an individual in perversion that lives in the sphere of your life, they should be able to look at you and look at your joy that you have in Christ and it persuade them to come to your Savior. And look at the way, that the conduct of your life as you live out the gospel and uh, understand that you have their best interest in mind. Shining light. We should be a, a satisfying persuasion and a shining light. Listen to this, Romans 10, 12, and we'll close. For the same Lord is rich 
and to all that call upon him. Just maybe, just maybe, if you won't cower under the ideology and the education of this world system, just maybe, if you'll be a voice, just maybe, if you'll show them what the Word of God says, and you'll live that life, just maybe, they'll call upon your Lord. Would not that not be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful if it was going up to a building that was on fire? And we said, hey, you better get out. And before the fire could get to them, they went out the door. I mean, you'll be the hero, right? Don't put down the baton, church. Don't lay it down. In 2021, keep on preaching. Keep on teaching. Keep on living. Because just maybe someone will see your life and the compassion that you have for them that's living a perverted life and say, you know what? I don't want this life no more. And turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't forget, God's willing to save. Sometimes I think the problem is the laborers are few. And we've kind of got our voice tied up and other different things. But uh, may we preach the gospel. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to a perverted culture. Preach the gospel to a people that are lost, that are blind. But watch. People, preach to a gospel that to a people that are in need the people that are lost there is hope for them just like there's hope for me and you live in a way that has their best interest in mind willing to be per persecuted for them give your life for the unrighteous just as Christ gave his life for us amen we are to counter the culture but we're also to engage it let's pray father we love you thank you for this time that you have given us together I pray, Lord, you'd bless this time and, Lord, uh, use this sermon in our lives to help us, to guide us, to direct us in, um, in the day and hour in which we live in. We want to be fruitful. Uh, we want to see people come to know you. And, Lord, we pray that uh, the transforming gospel that we preach would be represented in the lives of the people here at Calvary Baptist Church. Lord, you know the needs. You know the individuals represented here. Lord, you can do with their lives what I can't. You know about their lives more than I know. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless them. Lord, that they would be ascended for their obedience. Closer to you. I pray, Lord, you'd bring the ones that would choose to walk by faith in light of your word. I pray, Lord, that you'd overwhelm them with joy and uh, bless them for their obedience. Thank you for the promises that's found in your word. And, Lord, we don't have to doubt it. And it's not a maybe so, but it's a promise. And I love you. Thank you, Lord. I pray you give us faith to walk in that. And I pray, Lord, you'd help us give us a heart for people that don't know you. And, Lord, I don't want to be out of commission on the Great Commission. And help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you uh, for your kind attention. And um, you are dismissed. We'll see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. for Sunday school.